Hello and welcome again. This is uh, the second part of the sequence of videos on the discrete logarithm problem. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about a little bit of, of what a group is. Now we give we didn't give exactly the definition of group, but we said that this is a group that uh, satisfies properties one through four. Um, if you don't remember what that is, go back to the previous video and look at those four properties that define what a group is. So the last part of the video, I mentioned something, uh, and it was that this uh, CP star, this collection of elements that is from one to P minus one, is what we call a cyclic group, which is a special kind of group. So I'll explain uh, in this video, what is this, uh, what is the meaning of this word cyclic here? Uh, before I go into that, I'm gonna give you an example here. So I'm gonna give you like kind of a, a introduction of what the cyclic group is. So let's look at this example here. So I'm gonna take uh, this Z11 star with the operation here between the elements, which is multiplication modulo 11. So the elements here will be the one numbers from one to 10. And I'm gonna choose this number two. And the reason I'm gonna choose this number two is because it has a special property. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna start taking powers of this uh, number two modulo 11 and let's see what we get from that. So let's see, alpha square will be just two square, but that's two square modulo 11 because that's the operation here, this modulo 11. So two square scores four modulo 11 or the remainder when divided by 11. So if you do uh, alpha cube, which is the same as two cube, uh, modulo 11, you get eight. And let's see one here. So alpha to the four, which is two to the fourth. That's gonna be 16 modulo 11. That's gonna be just five. I have all the computations here, so you can uh, actually double check all of this uh, probably with a calculator or Java. So I, ha I have here all the values. So I start uh, alpha is to the first power, this is just two, and then I get four, eight, five, 10, nine, seven, three, and then I get six and one. Okay, um, the, the important part here of this computation, let's look at that. I take all the powers of alpha, starting at the first power, the first power, and I go all the way up to the 10 power, alpha to the 10. What happens in that case? Let's look at the numbers that we get here, all these numbers that we get from, from four all the way to the last one, up to alpha to the 10. Those numbers there, are precisely the numbers that are in ZP, or in this case, Z11 star, which is all the numbers from one through 10. Okay, if you look at it, that's exactly what we have. So we, do we have number one? Yes, that's the last one. Do we have number two? Of course, that's the first one. This one is two. Do we have the number uh, three? Yes, it is here, three is there, four is here, five is here, six is there. And if you double check that, all the numbers will be there. So that happens if I take the, the powers of the number two and I uh, erase them to the uh, power one, two, three, four, and so on up to 10. Now what happens with power, let's say 11. If I get alpha to the 11, would be two to the 11 modulo 11. If you actually compute this, two to the 11 divided by 11 and take the remainder of that, you get two. If you do alpha to the 12, means two to the 12 modulo 11, you get four. You can double check that these answers are actually correct. So you get four and so on. And let's look at what happened at the beginning of the alphas first. So I get two, four. If you compute alpha to the 13, which is the next value here, you will get the number that goes after four here in the first wave that I did here, which is gonna be eight and then five, 10. So this is kind of the cycle I was talking about. Not only that I'm actually getting all the numbers in Z11 star when I take powers of two, once I reach the number one, everything starts repeating again. So I get two, four, eight, uh, two, four, eight, five, 10, nine, and so on, and this repeats forever, so for all the positive powers of alpha. 
So this alpha here, which is the number, of course, 2 here, has this property that when I take powers of that number and I take it modulo 11, I get all the elements in the set and the, there is a cycle there. That's what we call, in this case, a generator for Z11 star. Okay? So that's what we call a generator. It's a special kind of element in a Z11 star. So let me give you um, the definition of generator only for this uh, kind of thing. So we're going to say that some element in ZP star, with P here is an odd prime number, is a generator. So this is the definition for generator. If this happens, if you take all the powers of alpha to the P minus 1, and you get back exactly the same uh, elements that are in here. Now, that doesn't happen for all the elements in ZP star. So some of the elements that are here do not, do not have this property. You start taking powers and you don't get all the elements from 1 to P minus 1. But some of them have that property and those who have that property, we call them generators. And in this case, we're going to say that, that this group is cyclic. So what is a cyclic group? It's a special kind of group that has at least one generator. And what is a generator? This, you take powers of that element to the, this number of elements that are here, P minus one, and you get exactly all the elements back here. Of course, this operation of exponentiation is modulo P. All right. So a cyclic group is a group, I, I just said that, a cyclic group is a group with at least one generator. So if I have a group G, then G could be expressed or it's going to be equal to powers of one element. So that basically is what a cyclic group is. A cyclic group is just powers of one element with whatever the operation of the group is. In this particular case with this ZP star, the operation in the group is multiplication modulo P. These groups are always cyclic. They always have generators. So not only that, they have many generators. There is no, there's, only, uh, there's more than one. And this particular case with a P is big enough. Okay, so how do you check that something is actually a generator? So remember with the example, I started with the number two. How did I know that two will actually be a generator? So one way to check it would be then just take all the powers of all the elements and see if those powers give me the whole group. Now that might not be a very efficient way to do that, so the best way to do it is using uh, this theorem that characterizes when a number in ZP star is a generator. So this is what the theorem says. You, have, you want to check that something is a generator uh, in this group that is equivalent to say that alpha to the P minus one divided by Q is not congruent to one modulo P. And this, uh, here has to happen for all the primes Q that divide P minus one. If you have an element for which all these powers are not congruent to one modulo P for all the divisors of prime divisors of P minus one, then that element will be a generator, which saves a little bit of time. I don't have to compute all the powers of alpha. I just have to compute a few of them. Okay, so let's see an example of this. And now, before I go into the example, uh, you might be thinking, what this has to do with the discrete logarithm problem? It has a lot to do with that, because the discrete logarithm problem is strongly related with the concept of generators in CP star. So that's why we are studying this kind of things, because I need to uh, know, I need to have this kind of concept first before I actually give you the definition of the discrete logarithm problem. Uh, so let's go over an example of this and try to compute the generators of, four, of one of these groups. So let's say we have this example. We want to find all the generators of Z11 star. Okay, so in this particular case, my prime number is 11, as it says right here. Then I have to do P minus 1, which is 10. This computation requires me to know all the prime numbers that divide P minus 1. So I have to compute P minus 1, which is, of course, 10, and I get the prime divisors here of uh, 10, which are 2 and 5 in this case. So what do I have to do? So we have to check if uh, for which numbers that I have here in Z11 star, uh, for what numbers 
uh, do we have uh, we have this property here. So let's go ahead and do the computations for this particular case. Okay, so one thing you want to do is you don't want to check one. One is never a generator. So don't check it because it's, of course, when you do this congruence here, it's not going to be congruent uh, to one modulo P. So there's no, there's no reason why you have to actually check one. So we don't check that. So let's check alpha equals two. Now in the previous example, I just show you here, uh, through raw computations, we showed that this two is a generator, but let's do it with the theorem here. So what do we need to check? We need to check that two to the P minus one, which is 10 divided by Q is not congruent to one modulo 11 for Q that is a divisor of P minus one. P minus one is 10, so the divisors of P or 10 are two and five, the prime divisors. So I have to compute this and check that it's not congruent to one modulo 11. So let's do that. So what is the first one? It's two to the 10 divided by the first prime, which is two. So that will be two to the fifth. And if you do this computation, two to the fifth will be congruent to 10 modulo 11. So this number that is here is actually the remainder that I get when I take the fifth power of two and I do the remainder modulo 11. So that's 10, so it's not congruent to one. So that is, of course, passing the test. Let's do the next one. And that will be the last thing I have to do because I have to check for all the primes. I have only two prime numbers here, two and five. Then it's two to the, to the 10 over five, so which is two squared gives me four modulo 11, uh, which of course is not congruent to one modulo 11, so it passes the test. That's all, that's all I have to check. So there are a few computations I have to do in order to check that some number is a generator for my, for my group right here. So that too is generator. And remember what that basically means is that I can obtain all the elements of Z11 star as the powers of that particular element up to the P minus one. In this case, the P minus one is 10 because P is 11. So if you do all these powers here, you get all the numbers from one to 10, which is something that we did uh, before. All right. Um, three, let's check if three is a generator. So we need to check again with the theorem uh, that uh, the number so the P minus one divided by Q is not congruent to one modulo 11 for the primes that are divisors of 10 in this case, which is two and five only. So let's do the computation here. So we're gonna start with Q equals two. So it's gonna be three to the 10 over two, because that's exactly what I have to do here. That gives me three to the fifth power. That is unfortunately congruent to one modulo 11. So it fails the test because to be a generator, this cannot be congruent to one modulo 11. So it fails the test, therefore three is not a generator. So three is not a generator. So you will do the same for um, uh, four, five, six, and so on. So alpha equals three is not a generator of this element. So that means if I take powers of this element, I will not get all the elements of Z11 star. I'll get some of them, but not all of them. All right. So if you actually do all the computations, you just check each one of them, uh, one, one through uh, 10. Remember, you don't have to check one. Uh, it turns out that the generators of Z11 are two, six, seven, and eight. Okay, let's, re let's just emphasize what that means. So that means Z11 is the powers of two to the 10. So this all gives me one through 10. Exactly the same happens with six. If I take powers of six, the first power, the second power, after the 10th power, I get all the elements from one to 10. Remember that this exponentiation is modulo 11. So this will give me numbers between one and 11, and it gives me all of them. That's why six is a generator. Exactly the same will happen with seven. I get all the elements from one to 10, and exactly the same is gonna happen with eight. I get all the elements from one to 10. If I take the exponentiation here, modulo 11. So that's all the other generators. If you try the other ones, let's say, for example, you try, uh, let's say five. If you try five, five, five squared, five to the 10, they will not, those numbers will not be all of the elements of Z11 star. So five will not be a generator in this case. Okay, just an example. Uh, if you want to practice what we just did, uh, if you tried to find all the elements of Z13 star, that will give you just these elements two, six, seven, and 11. 
So this will be the generators for this. Different groups have different, different generators. Of course, 8 was a generator of Z11 star, but it's not a generator of Z13 star, because these are all of them. So that concept of a generator, as I, as I mentioned in the er, earlier in the video, is strongly related with the discrete logarithm problem. So in the next video, I will be able to define for you, uh, finally, what is the discrete logarithm problem. So I will see you in the next video.